Good morning. Today I am going to talk about a forward Arab service, which is a uh, unit that's, well, it's a bit difficult to use and it is um, maybe not very competitive. It's not the best type of unit that you can get for your points. Um, I mean, it's it's expensive, and what will happen is that in one in six games, your airstrike will hit yourself, and in the other games, you might your your airplane might get scared off by flak. So uh, it is not very good. It is not very competitive for the points that you're paying. If you're buying like an Arab server here, he'll cost you a hundred points. <sighs> That's not worth it. Unless you're playing Americans. If you're playing Americans, then that air observer will get to fire his uh, airplane twice, which is kind of nice, especially if you can run uh, dual platoons and you can have two of them. That's four airstrikes. Now you're talking. Of course, one of them will typically hit yourself, but I mean, <sighs> it will, at some point, it will hit the enemy and you will be able to choose which enemy. And that's the good part, because if you're just running, this is my, um, by the way, this is my uh, British uh, forward artillery observer. So not really an air observer, he's just standing in. I never, ever play air observers. Um, <clears throat> if you're just running an artillery observer like him, he'll, he'll hit some area and some units will get pinned out or maybe get hit, right? But with an air observer... The unit that you are targeting, in this case, there's a German unit right over there, right? The unit that you're targeting will most likely get hit. And if your uh, airplane comes in, right, it will get hit and something will happen to it. So it's more directional. It's more specific. If you want to take out this tank or that unit, then the air observer is for you. So how do you use it? Well, the first thing you do is you figure out what you want to kill. In this case, my air observer would really like to get rid of that German unit over there. So what you do is you place a marker on that German unit. I always use like these colored markers. <clears throat> and it has to be something that the air observer can see. And this is the first place where air observers is maybe not that good. If it was a forward observer, I could place it on a piece of terrain. I could place it on anywhere he can see. But since it is an air observer, he has to have a unit that is targeted. And this is... Uh, the the artillery observer can actually hit stuff that he can't see, right? Because the, the, the artillery strike just goes off in that general area. But the air observer... He has to have a specific unit, which means that quite often your air observer will be in danger from snipers. Because he has to move up. He has to be somewhere where he can spot stuff and where he can be spotted in turn. So, now, you've placed your, uh, your uh, airstrike on the unit that you want as your target. What happens next is that each round following that, even if the air observer gets killed... Um, you roll a die on a 2 or a 3, nothing happens, the unit can move, and you can actually shift your airstrike to a different unit if you want to. Um, again, it has to be within inside of the air observer if he isn't dead, but you can shift it to an, a new unit. For example, if an, a tank come in, comes into view and you would rather hit the tank instead of that unit of Germans, then shift it. Uh, shift it and you can do it all the way over there it doesn't have to be on the same in the same place at all right so you can shift it if your air observer is alive that's a two or three on a four five or six the airplane comes on and uh, you go to page 86 <coughs> to look at the table there um, but if you roll a one for the airplane the airplane comes, but the enemy gets to choose which of your units that the airstrike goes after. 
so you might actually be hitting yourself right here i've just placed it on my own uh, air observer but it could be my tank or whatever anything that that the enemy would like to hurt and kill that is where he places it and then go to page 86 and and go from there this rolling a one is why air observers is maybe uh, not so good because sometimes you will hit yourself and it sucks it really sucks when you do that now let's say you did not roll that one but instead your uh, your airplane comes on and you roll on a new table before you do that though you can place 18 inches away from that spot you can place your marker uh, it says uh, that uh, many players will doubtlessly use an airplane model airplane to represent their marker and and of course they will i haven't got one so i'm placing another marker 18 inches away right any unit that is within six of this marker or within six of the line between those two markers will get pinned and you roll for how many pins they get um, depending on the type of airplane that comes down <coughs> um, nope that's wrong sorry any unit on that line or within six of the markers will so it's like a huge blob right they'll get D3 minus one pins. So you can actually get zero pins, uh, but most likely you'll get one or two pins for each unit on, on that line, which is quite, quite good. Um, that's a load of pins that you can sort of deliver in a direction where you want it to go. Um, so, so that works when you get it down. Um, once you've figured out who gets pins, and that includes this unit, by the way, everyone gets pins there. Once you've done that, you roll the six on a one or a two. The uh, airplane that comes on is what's called a strafing fighter uh, or a, a three hour or four. It's a fighter bomber or a five and a six. It's a ground attack, a ground attack aircraft. Um, each of these is more powerful than the one before. Um, so you figure out which plane it is. And that is actually placed at that spot over there. Now, you figured out the plane, then you roll for flak. And here comes the, the bit that's really annoying, because um, even your own side has to roll for flak. Um, because your own uh, flak, uh, MMGs or whatever, what have you, uh, all weapons that are marked as having flak, they have to shoot if they don't roll uh, better than a certain number. Regular units roll a 4+. Veterans, uh, three plus, uh, sorry, regular units, three plus, veterans, two plus, inexperienced units, four plus, to avoid shooting at your own airplane. This sucks big time, because you can actually scare your own airplane away. And remember, every shot that goes up there, on a five or a six, you hit it, and you just tally up the number of attacks, and... Uh, if there is uh, more than three hits, it goes away. So it doesn't really take that much flag for your airplane to just fly off again. Um, and that sucks, really sucks. Right. Okay, next bit. Oh yeah, and by the way, the enemy, all their flag is shooting as well. So it only takes a few hits and it just goes away. Now, let's say there is no flag, okay? The airplane actually comes on. If it is the uh, the strafing fighter, then the unit that is hit there, they hit 2d6 hits on a two plus each of them, two plus pen. So most likely, many of that unit will die. And it will even, it will hit the top armor if it's a vehicle. Um, so, so even light tanks are in danger of being, um, shot up uh, from this attack if it's the uh, the strafing fighter 
If it's a fighter bomber, then you place a 3-inch template on that unit. That's enough to take out at least five of my Germans, right? Those five. That's a good chunk. And they have a 3 plus pin value. Again, armored targets, they get hit on the top. Now it becomes really dangerous, right? 3 plus on top. Um, <clears throat> my, my, uh, my light tanks will not like that at all. And even like 9 plus tanks, they go down to 7. Uh, they're in danger of being uh, glanced or, or penetrated, right? If it is a ground attack aircraft, then the unit takes D3 additional pin markers. Oh, that unit will get so many pin markers. No matter which aircraft hits, that unit will be pinned out for the next turn. Right, the ground attack aircraft, that's a four inch template. That will take out six, maybe five or six of my Germans. Um, additional D3 pin markers, and the attack has a plus four uh, penetration value. That will hurt most tanks, right? And um, my Germans, they will just die. So, so the attack itself is pretty powerful if it does land, but there's so many ways that this can go wrong, right? There's the, I can hit myself, it might not come down, um, there's the flag might scare it off. We don't know which attack it is. So there are like four places where this can go wrong before you've even hit. That is why I say that air observers are not really competitively worth their points. But that's also how you use them. And they, they can be beneficial in the fact that this will follow this unit around. It will just go with the unit. It's, it's not like a, a, an artillery strike that hits a certain area and doesn't move unless you roll that it has to move, right? Um, it will follow the unit. And if you want it to move to a different unit, you can. Um, so, so that is beneficial. And also that line is beneficial. But I would not recommend doing this unless you're running those Americans I talked about before. Right, that was Air Observers for Rookies. Cheers.